there. We're gonna try this again. Um, all right. So thus far, um, we're plugging along. We're doing what we're supposed to. Doing what we need to. Right. <laughs> this is the year I actually established the shop in all of its rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Up till now, it's been a little more than an expensive hobby. If you kind of follow through the progression of this little shop, um, it's more a list and a video documentation of what not to do. That makes sense? Okay. What not to do. Um, going from there at this point I've established we, we brought in another um, helper another apprentice helper with some actual experience I can I can let me see he's almost as self-sufficient as Isaiah is at this point and Isaiah is pretty damn self-sufficient he can take the car a lot we're receiving we are receiving I can walk him around the car and go these are the things to address go and he can take him all the way up it needs a final inspection before it goes in the booth still uh, for quality control purposes and then he's good to go he can he can do 90 percent of the work to get him ready for the paint booth a new guy i'll put him probably at about the the 60 percentile he needs someone looking over his shoulder periodically still and I think he'll flush out rather quickly once he gets the groove in the shop. <laughs> but he didn't come in and put his hands in his pockets. Um, he didn't come in and run around like a fucking maniac. Come in, asked what to do, was shown what to do, and ran with it, took care of it. And then came to me immediately and said, alright, um, I got some questions, take a look at this. So we looked at it, he did fine. What else do I need to do? That's the kind of help I need. I'm working everybody. Essentially, it's a heavy part-time schedule right now. 20 to 35 hours. Um, the key is to populate the shop and have it running at full capacity from 10 to 4. With lunch in the middle there. Um, 10 to 4, 10 to 5. And as I establish more revolving work car lots, primarily right now are revolving work, as well as some other incidences of uh, minor crash related and the oddball jobs that we have trickle into our shop. Um, get everybody on the same page of music so we're all grooving together. That, that's more important than having highly skilled or knowledgeable people, having a group of people that can work together and complement each other's limited assets right now. I did have the good fortunes, one of those friend of a friend deals, went over and met another uh, car lot owner and we're going to receive our first car from them tomorrow. Um, so I would make two lots that, you know, if we can do as little as one car a week, as many as, you know, two to four per lot, we're good. At that point, we've got funding behind us. Again, thus far, four and a half years in, it's little more than a recital of what to not do. But I started unfunded, um, poor credit, and no real connections in this, this leg of the industry, in this particular industry, period. And we built, uh, I've built all, all of that in the last four years. The last six months or so have been um, finding stability in that not that roller coaster anymore. The last couple weeks have been great. I've had a lot of old customers come in and say hi. The first restoration I did right here where I'm sitting 
It was just a quick little scrub down and primp and preen on a 65 Mustang. We used very cheap materials. We used an Autobahn epoxy sealer, which is awful. Um, we used, I think we used an Autobahn. No, I used a good epoxy. I used a BASF epoxy. Uh, we use hot rod paint, which is a single stage, and it's, it's junk. It doesn't have any holdout whatsoever, like two years of holdout, and then it, then it just oxidizes and comes apart and shrinks back and peels off of ridges and seams. I think I've got him talked into letting me repaint it. Uh, we're not going to go whack out crazy, but I'm going to try to give him an excellent value just to let me repaint it because I, I hate having that car out there looking like it's a 18 year old paint job because it really does not um, I didn't apply shit wrong I, I, I pretty much went by rote on that it's just I'll have to show you when it comes in it's just poor materials We used as the owner requested. He brought materials. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of old customers come in. Uh, our buddy with the big um, utility van that we put the additional doors in came in. That was a cool visit. Um, it's just, it's been really cool lately. I've been very blessed with some very good customers that even if they've got nothing they want to bring in, they just stop by and say hi. And I, I really, that means a lot to me that I've been able to impact someone's life enough <coughs> that um, they would consider just stopping by to check out how things are going. The first finest thing you can do is chase off your time wasters. Little jobs, the revolving jobs are great, but you get these Craigslist car lot guys. They're not car lots. They're probably jumping titles illegally. And they want you to scrub and shoot something for 200 bucks. And it just doesn't, it's not. Chase those fuckers away. Uh, the, the idea, the mentality that too many people have, and I had momentarily, I got better is it's better to have something in the shop to do than nothing at all and that's a false pretense uh, it's better to do nothing and stay home and go broke more slowly than it is to work on a project that costs you more to do than you get paid and that's that's a harsh fact and reality that, that folks have to realize. Uh, one of a couple of the groups I'm in, the old Facebooks, um, people asking, I got this guy who wants to pull this off the frame and bar, bar, bar. And there's guys all over the map throwing numbers at this kid for an idea to bid this out. <laughs> folks, if you're a passive observer learning, about body and paint and wanting to restore your own cars I'm gonna tell you now it's not cheap and it's not easy those that are in the know and get it you'll you'll nod in, in silent resignation I don't care what it is if it comes off a chassis for a full 360 degree look-see scrub clean wire um, mechanical chassis suspension <laughs> body paint the works um, the simplest cars the cheapest cars and start off in good drivable condition you still start the clock at 25 grand and you almost have to do a this is this is our budget we're working with and we bill hourly when you do that, you've got to keep a log sheet. You've got to keep a, an accurate log sheet of materials you use, of hours you use. Um, has to be done. Of the multiple restoration projects we have going on that are, of course, behind as usual, half of them are time and material, and they, they have to be. Um, 
it allows you as the operator to do better work because you don't feel crowded and rushed. It allows you to take time on the aspects that need time. It allows you to redress issues as they come up. If you lock yourself into it costs this much and you get into a nest of worms, a lot of guys find it difficult to call the owner and redress those issues. Or, worse still, the owner comes in and says, no, I'm not spending any more money on that. And one of the cars that we've got in there that's a static bill, I did have to redress some issues with that owner as well. Don't be afraid of that. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get the, the smoker up and going and burning, uh, get this space cleaned up a little more habitable, and move on with our day of celebratory gathering. Um, this is a Sunday morning coffee. I wanted to get in and out quick. That's kind of what's going on. That's kind of how I view things and how my perspective has changed over the years. I entered this profession a know-nothing asshole. I'm definitely still an asshole. Pretty sure I'm still a know-nothing, but I do have some experience behind me to pull from now. So take it as you will. Maybe I can help someone out there not repeat some of my bad errors. Only about half of what you do on a shop is what you actually do on the floor. The rest of it is how you take care of business.